understand that when you come to Christ Covenant Church that you are in spiritual training. Amen. And that's why we have these declarations. That's why we do this because we are all in training. And we have to realize some of you, you don't understand why we make that declaration of our offering, but some of us catch it because I don't know nobody that don't want to prosper. Right. I don't know about you. I don't know nobody that don't want to, that doesn't want to live a long life. I don't know nobody that really don't want to do great things for God. So we have to understand what's what we're saying here. If you don't want to be prosperous, then you don't say it. If you don't want to live long, then don't don't declare it or decree it. If you don't want to do nothing for God, then don't declare it. But for the ones that do, because I noticed something, the people who are declaring it are in decreeing. Uh, it's prospering. And, the, and, and let me tell you something. I noticed something that in this congregation, those who are, de are declaring in the Korean, I don't see no deaf peop dead people among the, the, the body of, of Christ Covenant Church. They prosper. And we, we, so you have to be careful to upheed to what's going on around you. Turn with me to Matthew Gospel, chapter number 24. Matthew Gospel, chapter number 24. And I want to look at verse number 37. So that's Matthew Gospel, chapter 24, and I want to bring your attention to verse number 37. So that's Matthew 24 and 37. When you have it, so praise the Lord. Matthew 24, 37. Are we all on one accord? Amen. Matthew 24 and 37, and it reads, But as the days of Noah, were, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse number 42 says, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house has no, had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour. You do not expect. I want to preach on the subject this morning. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior. But this message is a dire need for the body of Christ. And God emphatically placed it on my heart to preach this because it's not being preached a lot. I'm not saying that I'm the only one that's preaching it, but he told me to tell the church to warn the body of Christ to get ready. The Bible said in Acts 1 and 11, an angel said this, he said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus who was caught away and lifted up from among you into heaven will return in just the same way in which you saw him go into heaven. He was saying this to indicate what the scripture said and what Jesus said about his second coming. And this is so important because all of heaven bears witness that Jesus Christ is coming back. And he's coming back, ladies and gentlemen, to receive his true church unto himself. He's coming back to receive a glorious church. A church without spot or wrinkles. He's coming back. So my goal today is to warn the people to get ready. 
The time is, a, is upon us, and the question becomes, are you truly ready to meet Jesus Christ? You know, because a lot of times, most people uh, go on living not realizing that Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus said that he's coming back. The scripture says that he's coming back. And, G and, and therefore, as his people, we should get ready for his return. So as people of God, we should be getting ready for Jesus Christ's return and warn others to prepare ourselves for Jesus Christ's return. Please listen, because as it stands today, most of the churches are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ. Most of the churches that, that's globally are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ. In fact, Paul said in 2 Thessalonians, chapter number 2, verse number 3, he said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Listen, because I need you to understand something. Because a lot of times, we perceive this to be that people will stop coming to church. But let me tell you something. That's just one aspect of it. Yes, there would be a time where people would stop coming to church. But there is another aspect, aspect of it. The other aspect of this falling away is when the church begins to shift from the standards of God. So there, there's a great falling away in one aspect. Yeah, people have stopped coming to church, but what about the people who are in the church? What about the church? But what about the remaining church? The Bible, uh, the, the, the other aspect of the falling away is when the church began to shift from the standards of God. When the church stopped, uh, stopped holding on to the truth of God's word. That's what he's talking about. The falling away occurs not just for people not coming to church, but it occurs when people stop holding to the truth of God's word. And you will know that we are at the brink of Christ's return when the church stopped falling away from the standards of God. Paul said that in the last days before Jesus Christ returned, the church will be in great rebellion against God. In other words, the church will shift from the standards of God. And that's what we're seeing, ladies and gentlemen, in the church today. We see churches shifting from the standards of God. And Jesus said here in Matthew 24 and 4, take heed that no man deceive you. And one translation said, do not let anyone mislead you because uh, verse number 37 said, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the second coming the son, the, when the second son of man be. In other words, in the days of Noah, the people were caught up with the pursuit of life. Watch this now. They were caught up with the pursuit of life, and they didn't know that the judgment of God was right around the corner. In other words, they were, li they were living life as normal, and they was living it up, and they were totally unprepared when the flood came. And, and the Lord said, this is what is going to happen in these end times. They're gonna be, people are going to be caught up in the pursuit of life. That They're going to be unprepared when the flood comes. And this is, what, how, this is how the world is going to be and most of the churches and all of the world are going to be. They're going to be totally unprepared when Jesus Christ returns. Because Jesus said in verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. One translation says this, watch therefore, give strict attention, be cautious and active for you do not know in what kind of day your Lord is coming. And one translation said, so be prepared for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. And Jesus said that in verse number 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage unto the day that Noah entered the ark. Listen and please understand, because I want you to understand something. I want you to understand that God does not have a problem with people pursuing life. Because I don't want you to get that misunderstood. He has no problem 
with you pursuing life. But he has a problem when people pursuing life without him. Let me say this again. He don't have any problem with people pursuing life. But he has a problem when you are pursuing life without him. He didn't have a problem with the people eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. The problem is when people give no attention to God and his standards. Watch this now. In Noah's day, the people gave no attention to God nor his standards. And they, in other words, they were living them, their lives unto themselves. They were ungodly and wicked. See, God have a problem with you and I when we start to try to live our lives unto ourselves and we exclude him out of our life. That's when the problem come in. Because when we exclude God out of our pursuit in life, guess what we're going to become? We're going to become corrupt and wicked. And because we're moving from the standards, we're moving for God from God's will. Because the Bible said, and Jesus said this, that this is what it's going to be like in the in the uh, in the last days. Because and I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Genesis chapter number six, verse number five, because this is what the last day is going to look like according to Jesus Christ. And He's referring to Genesis chapter six, verse number five. The Bible said in Genesis six and five. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of their thoughts of the heart were only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. Watch this now. He was, the Lord said that man was so wicked that he was grieved in his heart and he was sorry that he ever made man because their minds were continually wicked. Their minds were set arbitrary to God's standard. Their mind was set arbitrary to God. And another sign of Jesus Christ's return is the corruption and wickedness of the people. That's why we know that we're, we're, Jesus is on his way back because look at the corruption of the people in a society that we're living in. And when we see the world get that so corrupt, and when the people get that wicked, then you rest assured that Jesus is right there on the brink of coming back. Because the psalmist said in Psalm 14 and 2, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand who seek God. They have all turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is none who does good, no, not one. He said, when the corruption get that bad, nobody doing good, nobody, not one. And this is why it's so important to give uh, your life to Jesus Christ because in him, watch this now, we become the righteousness of God. It's different in him. He, see, it's different when we give our life to Jesus Christ. When we give our life to Jesus Christ, we become the righteousness of God. Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. This is what he says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. For he, made, for he made himself who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Watch this now. Listen. Because I need you to understand, the only way to move from corruption to righteousness is through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the only way you and I can move from corruption to righteousness is through the faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible said in Romans 5 and 17, he said, we received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness through the life of Jesus Christ. So we, we, the only way we receive the grace, the only way we see, receive the righteousness is through the life of Jesus Christ. And please understand that this is the only way to get ready and this is the only way to stay ready is to constantly live your life in Jesus Christ. We have to, you and I have to constantly live our life in Jesus Christ. In order for us to be uh, righteous in order for us to move from the dominion of corruption and ungodliness we can, the only way we can get to righteousness and holiness is through that life of Jesus Christ the Bible said in Galatians 2 and 20 I have been crucified with Christ it is no longer I 
who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live it by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Please understand now. I want you to understand something. Please understand that when your life, your life, when you live your life unto yourself, when you, you give no attention to God in his standards, that is your greatest problem. That is the greatest problem we can have as a society. It's when we begin to live a life unto ourselves and no, give no attention to God nor his standards, that's when this, we, we experience our greatest problem. Because Jesus said in his Matthew Gospel 24, verse number 38, For as the days of Noah before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be uh, will the coming of the Son of Man be. Watch this now. Jesus said that this is what it's going to be like. He said people are going to be pursuing life and giving no attention to God and His standards. See, that's what it's here. It's we right here on the precipice of it. We are living in a time where people are pursuing life, giving no attention to God and His standards, and it's all right. To pursue life, but just don't pursue life without God. And see, that's where the problem lies. That's what's, what was the problem with Noah's generation. They were pursuing life, and they were paying no attention to God, no his standards. And, but, 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 but he wanted his God, Jesus wants his disciples. God wants his people to understand this. In, 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 in Matthew 24 and 42, he said, watch there, therefore, give strict attention be cautious and active, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. Watch this now. He says, no one knows the precise time of his coming, but he's coming. Our job, watch this now, is to pay attention to God and his standards. Our job is to get ready and to stay ready because we don't know when he's going to show up. See, that's what he wants us to do. I, you you want to know our main job? Our main job is preparing for Christ to return. Our, our, one of our, our job description is getting ready and staying ready because we don't know when he's going to show up. Nobody knows when Jesus Christ is going to show up. No man knows when he's going to show up. So we have to be ready at all times just in case he show up. And let me say this. You don't want to be in a wrong situation when he shows up. You better make sure that it's line up on line, precept on precept. You, you can't afford to be in a bad situation when he shows up. Because Jesus said, but know, but know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. One translation said, understand this, if a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. He said he would keep watch and wouldn't allow his house to be broken into. Watch this now. Because Jesus is saying that you have to live your life like a thief trying to burglarize your house. Jesus said you, you have to live your life by constantly looking out for the thief. In other words, we're supposed to be constantly looking out for the thief. You have to, in other words, he said, you have to keep watch. You have to give um, uh, uh, um, attention, strict attention. You have to be cautious. You got to be active in order to keep Satan out of your life. You, you, know, you don't believe Satan trying to enter into your life? We have to realize who the real thief is. The real thief, according to the word of God, is Satan. Satan is the real thief, and he is the source of, of all the confusion in your life. And he is the source of all the corruption and wickedness of the people. Satan wants the church and the world all on the same page. Let me say this again. Satan wants the church and the world all on the same page. He wants the church and the world pursuing life, giving no attention to God and his standards. That's what he wants. He wants the church in the world pursuing life, giving no attention to God and his standards. Because it's, it's, Jesus said it's going to be just like the days of Noah. And the people were completely caught 
unaware. Watch this now. In Noah's generation, the people procrastinated. They intentionally put off the preaching of Noah. Watch this now. They procrastinated. Every opportunity Noah got, he preached to those people. He let them know that it's going to rain. Every time he got Noah preached about getting right with God, Noah preached about living uh, to God's standards, Noah preached about the coming judgment of God, and many people were lost except eight people. This man preached to, the, to, to, the, to his generation, and only eight people were spared. Oh, my God. And the Bible said he preached to these eight people and only eight people, no, to the generation and only eight people were spared. And Jesus said in this Matthew Gospel 24 and 44, therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not know. One translation said you can avoid trouble by always being ready for my unannounced return. In other words, God wants every child of God to stay in the state of being ready. Because you don't know when your time will come. Whether you're going to be ready when you die or whether you're going to be ready when he comes. He wants us to be ready because this is a moral obligation for every true believer of Jesus Christ. It's to remain in the state of preparedness. And anyone who are not prepared are going to be lost. You're going to have to make sure that we are prepared when Jesus Christ come back. You don't want to be like Matthew chapter 25 when he talked about the five wise and the five foolish versions. You better make sure that you are wise. You better make sure that you're not foolish because those five ones got caught, those five foolish ones got caught in a messed up situation. And the Bible said they knocked unto the door, but the bridegroom said no. It closed them out, shut them out. You're going to be lost. And listen, because we got to understand that the day or the hour is not even important, but the state, of being, the state of being is. He's saying that don't worry about the hour. Don't worry about the day. You just be ready. Your state of being is more important than you worrying about when it's going to happen. God will, you got to understand, God will and desire for all of us is to stay in the being of getting ready and staying ready. When we get ready, how do we get ready? We get ready by repenting and believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how we get ready. There's no other way to get ready. The only way we can get ready as a people is we got to be repenting and believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus said in Mark Gospel 1 and 15, repent you and believe in the gospel. One translation said, turn from your sin and act on his glorious news. And one translation said, change your life and believe the message. In other words, you have to repent and believe because it's getting you ready for Christ's return. You, the only way you can get ready for Jesus Christ's return is re through repentance and believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, you have to change your life and believe the message. How do we change our life then? We change our life by giving our life to Jesus Christ. You have to completely surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And once you have done that, you have to stay in him. Watch this now. It's, not, it's more to it than just giving your life to him, but you've got to stay in him because our state of being should be always to stay in God. That should be our state of being because Paul said in Acts 17 and 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. And in other words, it's through him that we live, we function, and, and, and our identity is established. Why? Because we are his offsprings. The Bible said in that same verse and that, uh, that we are his offsprings. We are, in other words, we are the sons and daughters of God. Now that we are become the sons and daughters of God, the next thing to do is to stay ready because he already positioned us. Now that he positioned us into the position of being ready, now he said you got to stay ready. In other words, you stay ready by staying in the spirit of God. This is how we stay ready. Jesus said in John 6 and 63, it is the spirit who gives life. 
We don't even have life if we don't stay in the spirit. We have to stay within the perimeters of the Holy Spirit in order for us to maintain life. Because John 14 and 26 said, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you everything I have told you. So it's the Holy Spirit job to train us and equip us to stay ready for the return of Jesus Christ. Another reason, another way we stay ready or we stay ready is by holding to the word of God. So we have to stay in the spirit, but on the other hand, we got to stay, we stay, we got to keep holding to the word of God. See, now we are living in a time where the church, the, 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 the remaining of the, the rest of the remaining church, those who hadn't fallen away and stopped coming to church, most of the churches now have shifted from the standards of God. So he's saying. But in order for you to stop that shifting, you got to, one, for once, stay in the spirit. And number two, you got to hold on to the word of God. Just what he said in Deuteronomy 8 and 6. He said, therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. Our job is make, to make sure that we are holding to and applying the word of God in our life. Deuteronomy 5 and 33 said, you shall walk. In all the ways which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may go, be well with you, and that your, you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. He said, if you want to live long, you want to prosper, then you need to stay connected to the word of God. And number the, the next uh, thing we can do to stay ready is disconnecting yourself from any form of evil. So you stay ready by staying in the spirit. You stay ready by holding to the word of God. And you stay ready by disconnecting yourself, disassociating yourself from any forms of evil. You have to disassociate yourself, ladies and gentlemen. And that right there is a hard pill to swallow when God tells you to leave people alone that don't mean you well. When he tells you to leave people alone, that, 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 that don't match your character. When he tell you to leave people alone that's causing you to stumble and fall, you have to leave these people alone. So he's saying another way to be ready, you got to disassociate yourself from any form of evil. Proverbs 16 and 17 said the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. And one translation said the righteous try to avoid evil. They watch what they do and protect themselves. Watch this now. When you disassociate yourself from all the forms of evil, the Bible declares that you are protecting yourself. You want to protect yourself? The, be the greatest way to protect yourself is to stay away from evil and wicked people. That's the best way you can protect yourself. And then the, 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 another thing we have to realize to stay uh, ready, the, another aspect of staying ready is we got to dress ourselves up in righteousness. In other words, you got you to dress yourself in righteousness because Job 29 and 14 said, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. He said, I put on righteousness and it clothed me. And Isaiah 61 and 10 said, I will, be, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. In other words, he said, you need to be robed up in righteousness. Because the Bible said that we should put on righteousness as a, a breastplate. That's what it said in Isaiah 59 and 17. He put on righteousness as a, bre a breastplate. And Ephesians 4 and 24 said, put on the new self created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. And then the last thing I want to bring out on the table it's Romans 13 and 14. He said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its desires. In other words, he's saying, get ready, church. And, 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 and that's what the, the message that God wants me to, to convey to the body today, that we have to get ready as a church for the return of Jesus Christ because the signs are there, what's going on around us, should prompt our hearts to get ready. If you don't know that Jesus Christ 
is on his way back, then something is wrong with us as a church because when we see these wars that's going on, when we see uh, South, I mean North Korea sending troops to Russia, when we see uh, 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 Israel and Iran going to war, when we see all these things, we see the corruption that we see in our world system and in our government. If you don't think that Jesus Christ is on his way back, then you got to be blind. And we got to, I mean, there's nothing wrong. We got to make sure that we ain't got our eyes on the donkey or the elephant, but we got to get our eyes on the Lamb of God. Because right now, the devil is divisively destroying the church from within because we are making other things our, our, our priority. That, yeah, you get out and vote, but don't you let this stuff cause you to divide yourself and look at your brothers and sisters in a way because that ain't what it's about. Yo. Your mindset should be, it's not about the donkey or the elephant. It's about the Lamb of God. It's the Lamb of God. It's about the Lamb of God. As long as Jesus is sitting on the throne, that's, that's all that matters. So no matter who, which candidate that might win, God is still Lord. Because right now the devil is using this stuff to divide the remaining what's left of the church. And we have a, a, a war within the church, and this shouldn't be. This shouldn't be. God called us to love one another, not to tear each other down, but he called us to build each other up. And that's what God wanted me to tell you, get ready, because Satan is setting the stage for the Antichrist. And I'm letting you know right now, he's setting the stage for the Antichrist. And watch this now. Most of the people in the church are going to fall for his deception. The only way you won't fall for his deception is number one, staying in the spirit. Number two, holding on to his word. And number three, disassociating yourself from evil. You have to clothe yourself in righteousness. You can't go with every you can't go with the status quo. Because the Bible said the pathway to hell is wide and broad. But the pathway to heaven is straight and narrow. Are you willing to walk that narrow straight, that narrow street, standing all over this building? Get ready. Get ready and stay ready. This message is one of those self-examination messages. And you have to be perfectly honest with yourself. Are you pursuing life and giving no attention to God and his standards? And if you are pursuing life when not giving God any attention to him and his standards, then it's going to be just like those people when Noah went on that ark. They didn't pay no mind to the preaching, nor the living of Noah. They thought this was just a foolish man. This man crazy for building a big old boat in the middle of the desert. This man, another one, let me paraphrase, this man crazy to preach the unadulterated word in the middle of this corrupt generation. He looked crazy when he says that the economy going to collapse. He looked crazy when he tell you to get out of debt because what's about to come. He looked crazy when he tell you to live upright and holy in the, in the eyes of God. Because it's not the, the end thing to do. But my Bible said preach the word in season or out of season. 